Good morning. The Minnesota Senate Taxes Committee will come to order. Uh, today's Tuesday, March 28th. This is called LST Day, Local Sales Tax Day. Members, we have 19 bills that we're going to hear today. Uh, just, I'm going to have um, Ms. Pollack just briefly explain the process uh, for local sales taxes, where we are today, and what we expect to accomplish. Uh, Ms. Pollack. Madam Chair and members, um, just very briefly, um, I went through these uh, when we covered uh, the first group of local sales taxes uh, a couple of weeks ago, but um, all of the uh, local jurisdictions are here today because they have uh, passed a resolution um, prior to seeking legislative authority uh, to uh, impose a local sales tax, um, and their resolutions um, must have included things like the proposed tax rate, a detailed description of the capital projects that would be funded with the tax, the amount of revenue that the tax uh, from the tax that would be used for each project, and the total revenue that would be raised for all projects before the tax expires. Uh, and then, of course, all the jurisdictions today have submitted their resolution to the chair and ranking member of the Senate and House Tax Committees by January 31st. Um, and then, uh, as we uh, continue through the rest of the uh, requirements today, we are beginning the process of receiving legislative approval to impose the tax and then receiving voter approval at a general election and then finally filing the resolution of the voter approval with the Secretary of State uh, before um, imposing the, uh, the local sales tax. Thank you, Ms. Pollack. Um, we have the minutes before us. Uh, we do have a quorum present. Um, any corrections to the minutes, members? Seeing none, uh, the minutes are approved. Our first bill today, Senator Last, Latz, Senate File 1266, Adina, Local Sales and Use Tax Modification. Senator Latz, welcome to the committee. Um, if you'd like to uh, in say a couple words about your bill or and introduce your uh, testifier, please. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, I represent part of Edina along with uh, Senator Mann. Um, and uh, this is a request to be able to complete a project that was started um, with a sales tax authorization um, in past years. Uh, Braemar Park um, has a master plan in Edina, um, and uh, they had approvals in past election for sales tax uh, to uh, do work on it. Um, they are asking to change the total dollar amount authorized and to go back to election uh, for voter authorization this fall. Um, I have with me Perry Vetter, the Edina Parks and Recreation Director, to give you more details. Thank you, Senator Latz. Mr. Vetter, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Good morning, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, I'm Perry Vetter. I'm the Parks and Recre Recreation Director for the City of Edina. I wanted to thank Senator Latz and Senator Mann for introducing this, this bill, and also to thank uh, Representatives Edelson and Joachim for their companion bill in the House. Uh, the city of Edina has a rich history with skating and hockey, and Braemar Park hosts our Braemar Arena. In 2017, <coughs> we adopted a master plan for that complex. It's approximately 500 acres, and started the process of requesting a local option sales tax in 2020. Obviously, that was an abbreviated session, as we all had much more important things to tend to that year. In 2021, the Edina City Council passed another resol resolution for pursuit, and we were thankful to be included in that bill uh, with our local option sales tax language for approval. Shortly thereafter, we started an amendment due to a, a request from our, our local residents to expand Braemar Arena. Uh, we adopted that amendment into our master plan and requested again from the state legislature uh, a change in the local option sales tax language. We were there very thankful to this committee and the Minnesota legislature to be included in the 2022 tax bill. As you know, uh, that was not adopted. So we were very thankful to be getting that close on our project request. Uh, we are seeking an amendment to the total amount that the city of Edina can collect for this project. We are not asking for any change to the tax rate or the duration. We're simply asking to request the change in the amount um, within our fiscal capacity to collect. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vetter. And just to uh, be clear for the record, you will be seeking a new referendum. That is correct. Thank you. Yes. All right, any comments, members, questions? 
Well, seeing none, thank you, Senator Latz. Your bill will be laid over. Thank you. Next up, members, we have Senator Kubik. Uh, you have two bills up. We're going to start with 2917 Dilworth, followed by Detroit Lakes 2919. Senator Kupik, welcome back to the Tax Committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm here with the yes, Senate File 2917, which is for the city of Dilworth, uh, which is seeking a uh, sales tax for a new community center in the town. Uh, it would serve not only Dilworth, but some of the surrounding towns uh, as well. And it's uh, looking for a half cent sales tax for the next uh, 25 years. With me, I have the uh, city manager from the city of Dilworth. I'll tell you more about the project. Welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Yes, my name is Peyton Mastera, and I am the city administrator in Dilworth, Minnesota. And thank you, Madam Chair, for having me this morning as well to the entire committee and for Senator Kupek for carrying this bill in the Senate. Our fire hall is co-located with our community center, and our fire hall is coming down because we're going to be reconstructing a new one. And the only thing I've been tasked with by the city council, if you're going to get rid of our community center, we got to find somewhere else to put a new one. And so that's why we're here before you this morning. And as the senator was pointing out, we serve about a quarter million people up in the FM Fargo metro area. Uh, which is the second largest metro in the entire state, fastest growing county, Clay County, outside of the metro area. And our current facility is approximately 40 years old in need of renovation, but with this uh, fire hall being co-located where it currently is, it's not going to allow us to reconstruct there on the current side. On the eastern edge of town, we are developing, as part of a public-private partnership, uh, a new concept, a new uh, downtown concept, we'll call it, and part of our carve out in our investment with this is what the community center will bring. So we're looking for an investment in items such as daycare, youth programming, gathering spaces, uh, recreational facilities, exercise facilities. And this uh, sales tax you know, for estimates show they'll bring in approximately a quarter million dollars a year. So our little carve out uh, will bring in about $6 million over the course of 25 years. And again, this is a public-private partnership, so this is just a, you know, a quarter, we'll say a quarter piece of the entire puzzle as part of what we're putting together there in this eastern edge of the community. And other funding through this, through the PPP, will be through bond financing, uh, tax abatement, other facility revenues. And I'll take any questions. Uh, thank you, Administrator Mastera. Uh, members, any questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, uh, let's go to Senator Kupik. Any final comments? No, uh, thank. It's um, Dilworth is uh, just growing by leaps and bounds, and uh, this will certainly be a nice complement to the, the projects that are going on on their east side of their city, where it's just almost making a brand new downtown uh, on the east side. It's really well. Something. Thank you, Senator yep. Kupik. Senate File Two Nine One Seven will be laid over. Next, uh, Senator Kupik, Two Nine One Nine Detroit Lakes. You may enter, you have a few comments if you'd like, uh, Senator Kupik, then we'll introduce your testifiers. Sure. Uh, Senator, yeah, Senate file 2919 is for the city of Detroit Lakes. Uh, the current, uh, they want to add a sales tax uh, to redo the Detroit Lakes uh, Pavilion, which was originally built in 1915, uh, but it is a seasonal, seasonal structure, and uh, it is showing a lot of signs of deteriorating, and they have a great design uh, for a new uh, pavilion down on the lakeshore in Detroit Lakes. So I have a couple of testifiers with me. Uh, city Administrator is here. As well. uh, thank you, Senator Kupik. Uh, we'll start with uh, City Administrator uh, Clem. Welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record, please, and begin. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Kelsey Clem, the City Administrator. I also have Mayor Matt Brink here with me. Good morning. Uh, the Detroit Lakes Pavilion sits at the foot of Little Detroit Lake and within the city's 39-acre public park. Since its construction in 1915, this iconic facility has played host to many community dances, concerts, weddings, fundraisers, community events, and other large gatherings. The annual water carnival bash on the beach alone brings in over 6,000 people for a two-night concert event. Pretty much ask anyone in the area about the Detroit Lakes Pavilion and they know about it and have attended an event there. Unfortunately, as mentioned, the current pavilion is a seasonal structure in deteriorating condition. 
There's no effective temperature control in the building, which makes the facility inoperable outside of the summer months. And even then, it can be uncomfortable. Seasonal movement in the foundation creates problems with the floor and the roof. The windows are in the facility are old and leaky, and the building itself does not have any insulation. The new building would be constructed as a year-round facility, immediately expanding the use beyond the current May to September time frame. The new facility would include a large main hall with lobby, restrooms, smaller conference rooms, storage areas, and catering space. Uh, in addition to the pavilion building itself, the city is proposing other park uh, related park improvements, including additional parking and improved drop-off area, landscape green spaces, a renovated bathhouse, replacement of the current playground, and the addition of a splash pad. All these features are, are included in the $17.3 million request that was submitted to the legislature. Uh, the City of Detroit Lakes, I just want to clarify, currently has a half percent local option sales tax that is sunsetting June 30th of this year, uh, which is a full six years earlier than what was previously approved by the legislature. So this is not an additional sales tax. It'd be replacing the existing one that's there. Uh, with that, I'd just yield to any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Clem. Senator Rest. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, uh, Senator Kupek and, and Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Detroit Lakes has a very special place in my heart. <laughs> um, when I was in the house, I became friends with uh, Roxanne and Dave Daggett. And you're smiling. You know what a wonderful family they yep. are. They, befriend, they befriend, befriended my mom. And whenever Dave Daggett would come to the Capitol, he would take her to lunch or coffee or whatever if she happened to be visiting. And my exchange student also uh, enjoyed their place on the lake. And they taught her to water ski. And I think in a single day, and she did it all day long until it got dark. And <laughs> it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I, uh, I thank you and your community for the welcome that you gave my family. Thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, Senator Rest. It is a beautiful area. I see we have uh, the mayor. Mayor, welcome yes. to the committee. Please thank introduce you. yourself for the record and begin. Pardon me? Please introduce yourself for oh, the my, record and my begin. Name, my name is Matt Brink, and I'm the mayor. Mr. Brink, did you want to add anything to the testimony? No, uh, it's a really iconic building with a ton of history, and we want to create something for another 100 years of history in Detroit Lakes. So. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members, any further comments? Uh, seeing none, Senator Kupik, final comments. Yeah, I will just add, you know, as uh, people who don't have lake homes, uh, I may, being among those, uh, when we want to go and enjoy uh, the lake, uh, Detroit Lakes offers that. It's a, it's a great public beach, and this is attached uh, to their beach facility. So it's a, it's a great place for just families from around the region uh, to go and, and enjoy a little bit of that Minnesota lake life. Thank you, Senator Kupik. Senate file 2919 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Members, we're on uh, sales tax, or local sales tax item 6. That would be Senator Howe, 2516. Avon. Senator Howe, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Madam Chair, I believe my testifier is online, uh, remote, but uh, the city of Avon actually got approval for a local option sales tax in 2019. Uh, but as we all know, since that time, the cost of construction, they had nine projects on their approved. The cost of construction since 2019 has just skyrocketed. So what they're asking for is to be able to collect and change that, that, uh, that cap. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll go to the testifier if, uh, if I'm not quite sure if the mayor or if the city administrator is available. Thank you, uh, Senator Howe. Um, we have Mayor of Avon. Welcome to the committee, uh, Mr. Manthe. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Yes, uh, um, member chair and committee members, I'm Jeff Manthe, mayor of Avon, Minnesota, and delighted to be with you today. Uh, continue with your testimony. Yes, um, in 2019, the legislature approved collection of local sales taxes and our voters approved a one half, uh, one half of 1% uh, tax levy to help us with specifically indicated road projects. Uh, we are working through and that very helpful and we have collected um, some sales tax revenue that we have begun to employ on about three of the projects that were designated. 
what we have learned in the process, the cap on that resolution was $1.5 million. And with the inflation that we're seeing in the economy um, and just with general um, additional costs that we have uncovered that will be needed to complete the projects, we will fall woefully short of being able to cover these projects if we discontinue this at $1.5 million and our request and the resolution that the council passed is that we be allowed to continue this um, as we anticipate now to complete these projects will cost nearly four times. So our request is that we be allowed to continue uh, to collect this tax um, to allow us to complete these same designated projects that the voters approved for us back uh, here three, four years ago now. So that is our request. Uh, we're not ex looking for extension past that 2045 deadline. We're not looking for additional projects. We're look just looking to continue to collect that tax so that we can deliver on what the voters had believed they were approving back here when they approved this measure. And uh, that, is the, that is the nuts and bolts. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And, and you will be, um, you'll, you'll be going to the voters for a referendum uh, to continue uh, to increase the amount and to uh, continue with those projects, is, uh, uh, as the bill states. Um, Senator Howe, any, or members, any questions? Senator Howe, any no, final comments? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to pr present. Uh, I think it's a reasonable request uh, since uh, we all know anyone, any of, the, of us that have been, been involved in the construction industry uh, understand the, uh, the, uh, the, the rise in cost of any construction project that we've been involved in. So I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator uh -huh. Howe. 2516 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Uh, Senator Jasinski, I'm looking for Senator Jasinski, might not see him. Uh, we will uh, move on then to uh, Senator Pappas, Senate file 2366. Mm. I'm not seeing Senator Pappas. We'll come back to those. I'm looking for Senator Hoffman. This is like Rolodex, find your senator. All right. <laughs> I'm not seeing Senator Hoffman. All right. Senator Dreheim, I know you're here. Come on up. Senate file 1395. This is the city of Fairmont. Thank you, uh, Chair Nelson and members of the committee. Um, today we have a uh, newly elected mayor of, of Fairmont and the city administrator. And I will just go right into it. We're, we're looking um, voter approved community center for a regional hub, my largest city in my seven county district. So I'll hand it over. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Dreheim. I see we have the mayor of Fairmont. Yes. Mr. Bartz, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin with your testimony. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the Senate Tax Committee. My name is Lee Bartz and I am the mayor of Fairmont. Thank you for hearing Senate file 1395, and thank you, Senator, for carrying this bill. Fairmont is a city of over 10,000 residents, just along I-90 in south central Minnesota, just north of the Iowa border. We are one hour from the nearest city of comparable size and serve as a regional destination for people in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa who visit Fairmont for work, they shop, dine, seek health care, compete in athletics, and spend time on one of our five lakes. Fairmont has been undergoing years-long community engagement process with our residents and are asking our community center that meets the region's needs. We currently do not have a community center, and our existing ice arena facility is having a hard time keeping up with demand. One, we'd have to travel over 40 miles to get to the nearest community center. Our voters have passed a local option sales tax in 2016 for a community center. When the cost was projected to be much less, the project stalled some with COVID and since then construction costs and inflation have significantly increased the total project cost. 
So we are here today to ask for the ability to go back to the voters and ask for more. Residents and non-residents of Fairmont desire a facility where people can come and gather to partake in health and wellness activities and host regional events that will draw people to the community. Fairmont has so much to offer, but are slowly lack a place where people throughout the region can come to connect with one another. So thank you to the committee for your consideration. City Administrator Kathy Reynolds and I would be happy to stand for any questions. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Any comments, members? Questions? I'll just note, uh, since we talk about these wonderful lakes in our state and where one might have learned to water ski, I learned to water ski in Fairmont All right. at your lakes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you. I think so much. Uh, seeing no questions, uh, the bill will be laid over 1395 for possible inclusion. Oh, Senator Drayheim, I forgot. Did you have any final comments? No, I, think, I thank the committee for their time and uh, important project for the community. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the bill's laid over. Uh, I see Senator Pappas, Senate File 2366, City of St. Paul. Welcome to the Texas Committee, Senator Pappas. Thank you, Sir. Thank you, Sir Nelson. It's like old time. It surely is. <laughs> Good morning, um, Senator Nelson and Chair Rest and committee members. Thank you for hearing Senate Bill 2366, a bill that would authorize the City of St. Paul to bring to the, the ballot for the people to vote on a one cent local sales tax increase. Three quarters of one cent would be dedicated to fixing the state of our streets, with the remaining one quarter of one cent being dedicated to the revitalization and maintenance of our parks and rec facilities. I'm joined by City of St. Paul Mayor Melvin Carter to speak to the request. We also have with us St. Paul Public Works Director Sean Kershaw, St. Paul Park and Rec Director Andy Rodriguez, and St. Paul's Treasurer Sarah Brown to answer any technical questions. And I'll turn it over. Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Pappas. Mayor, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you so much, uh, Chair S, Chair Nelson, members of the committee. I'm St. Paul Mayor Melvin Carter, and I thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of St. Paul's proposed one cent increase to our local sales tax, which would generate nearly $1 billion to invest in the safety and longevity of our regionally significant transportation infrastructure and nationally acclaimed parks and recreation facilities. With all respect to this committee's administrator, St. Paul unfortunately began our presentation early today with the live demonstration you undoubtedly experienced on your way to the office this morning. Uh, as a lifelong St. Paulite, uh, it's my birthright to complain about the condition of our streets. Decades of disinvestment by city and state leaders have resulted in extraordinary disrepair that our residents, commuters, and guests experience almost constantly. While our streets have an expected 60-year lifespan, my administration inherited them on a 124-year replacement cycle. Our number of pothole claims has skyrocketed this year, from 85 in all of last year to 250 in just the first two months of 2023. The magnitude of this disrepair is illustrated by our most recent pavement condition index report. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 100, our arterial and collector streets uh, currently score a 48, which is considered fair to poor condition. Given our current levels of investment, that condition would further deteriorate to a 20 uh, over the next two decades. However, in that same time, given the influx of resources a one cent sales tax would provide, we can attain an average street PCI of 70 or satisfactory conditions. That's an industry standard that government agencies strive to achieve. According to the Trust for Public Land, St. Paul rep operates the number two parks and recreation system in the nation second only to Washington, D.C., which receives federal funding to maintain the National Mall. Each year, our nationally recognized parks and trails attract more than 15 million visitors and outdoor enthusiasts from all over the country, but our facilities are aging. The average building in our park system is approaching 40 years of age, and if we want to maintain our national acclaim, we can't do so by standing still. This investment would revitalize aging parks infrastructure with a focus on the worst conditioned parks, community centers, trails, connections, and athletic facilities. Funding would also provide the opportunity to connect the region with natural resources in new and exciting ways. A brand new, modern, multi-purpose community center on the east side would serve a densely populated area and attract visitors from surrounding suburban cities. A mixed-use, river-focused space and National Park Service headquarters at Crosby Farm Regional Park and a one and a half million, uh, I'm sorry, and a one and a half mile river balcony promenade along the downtown bluff will transform urban infrastructure into a public space that connects parks and civic landmarks. 
These innovative projects will spur new development along Kellogg Boulevard. But none of this critical work is feasible without adequate funding, which is what our local sales tax proposal accomplishes. We are a growing capital city that is home to over 310,000 residents. We're a hub for several Fortune 500 companies, healthcare organizations, and employers of all sectors. We boast world-class entertainment venues, and our parks and recreation amenities are among the best in the nation. As a thriving regional hub, we host over 130,000 commuters who traverse into our city every day for work. Roughly 45% of visitors to our, to, our regionally, to our regional parks and trails and 85% of visitors to Como Zoo are visitors who live from beyond our city's borders. And an estimated 7 million visitors come from all over the region to St. Paul each year to experience our businesses, museums, attractions, uh, shopping, restaurants, and entertainment district. A sales tax proposal uniquely invites those avid users of St. Paul streets and parks to be a part of the solution to maintain them. Uh, whether we like it or not, whether we plan for it or not, whether we budget or not, St. Paul is going to have to invest a uh, billion dollars plus into our streets over the next decade. Uh, we're asking you to allow us the opportunity to do so on our terms uh, so that we're making the most of our dollars. Finally, I'll share with you, you will certainly hear from individuals and groups uh, who are uncomfortable with the one cent sales tax proposal. You will not hear any challenge to our assertion that our streets are in dire need of, uh, of in dire and urgent need of investment. Uh, and frankly, you will not hear an operational alternative to provide that much needed support and resources that we need to our streets. However, this decision is far too important for me to make by myself. It's far too important for those who oppose it to make by themselves. And it's far too important for any of us in this room to make by themselves. That's why our state statute is written, as you well know, uh, that we don't get the opportunity to make that decision in this space. We are asking for the opportunity to take this question to our St. Paul voters so our St. Paul voters can make that decision for themselves if the dire and urgent needs within our city's streets and parks are worth a one penny. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Senator you, Pappas? Oh, Senator Rest. May I ask a question? Oh, yes, Senator Rest. Um, uh, Senator Pappas and Mayor, you know that we have to put aside the, uh, the law for uh, local sales tax in order to um, grant you the opportunity to do that. So that's why your first paragraph there begins, notwithstanding what the law is, you will be given the, um, you would be given the opportunity to do that. You made a very good case earlier this year that cities are the first class should be operating in terms of um, local sales taxes, should be operating under a, a different set of rules. Um, uh, local sales tax now have to be f to in support of a, um, a, capital, a capital project. And for the city of the first class, that's very difficult to uh, do, so you're asking for um, the rules to be suspended in a sense and have and have um, and have it support programs um, The upshot of that is um, Senator Pappas is that tax committee is going to be looking at uh, rules for uh, cities of the first class or um, or larger larger cities that may also be coming to ask for uh, sales tax that don't fit so neatly into the rules that that we have um, but I want you to know that we will be doing that even if this, if this bill is at this time um, approved. We're going to be looking at different criteria for, uh, for larger cities. Um, they may be just as strict, but they'll be program uh, driven or focused on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you, Senator Rest. Senator Pappas, do you have any further testifiers? I don't. I just appreciate the time this morning. Thank you. Uh, uh, just a minute, uh, Senator Pappas. Uh, Senator Weber has a question, and we do have a Zoom testifier. Uh, Senator Weber. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is the Zoom testifier Mr. Purdy? Yes. Okay, I will, I will wait till he's done then, Madam okay. Chair. Um, oh, and Senator Pappas, uh, we have someone else. Uh, welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself for the record and begin. Yes, hello, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Amanda Dewar, and I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs at the St. Paul Area Chamber. Our chamber represents 1,700 members and affiliates in the East Metro. 
While our chamber was not asked to weigh in prior to the city announcing its sales tax proposal, we have since provided the administration with opportunities to brief our membership. When we polled our members, 73% opposed the proposal. We certainly agree that the streets in St. Paul are in desperate need of repair, but we cannot support the city's proposal to increase the sales tax for several reasons. First and foremost, street maintenance is a core function of municipal government and should be a budget priority. While the current administration and council may not be to blame for the condition of St. Paul's roads, asking residents to vote to approve additional taxation to determine whether or not the streets are drivable advocates their leadership role. Secondly, St. Paul businesses are worn down by government actions that negatively affect the city's economic viability. This includes last year's 14.7% levy increase and a rent control ordinance that has slowed local development and growth in the property tax base. Beyond that, the metro area of sales tax increases for housing and transit being considered would add an additional percent above what is being contemplated here. Further, the city of St. Paul is considering an additional ballot initiative to increase property taxes to fund childcare. We can't look at these proposals in a vacuum. They compound upon each other and make the cost of doing business in St. Paul difficult for employers and residents alike. Instead, we would encourage the city of St. Paul to capitalize on the local government aid discussions currently underway at the legislature. Under these proposals, the city would receive up to 16 and a half million more in LGA every year, which would be annually adjusted for inflation. At the very least, the LGA conversation should happen before a sales tax measure is put on the ballot, so there's an opportunity to evaluate resources and build stakeholder consensus. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Doerr. And uh, finally, I see uh, Mr. Purdy is on Zoom. Mr. Purdy. St. Paul citizen. We are not seeing Mr. Purdy. Um, Mr. Purdy, we cannot see you, but uh, perhaps we can hear you. Uh, Mr. Purdy, welcome to the Taxes Committee. Uh, please introduce yourself for the record and begin. Oh, I think you're on mute, Mr. Purdy. Can you unmute? I believe you're unmuted now, Mr. Purdy. No? No. All right. Um, we will um, continue. Mr. Purdy, I'm sorry, we cannot hear uh, you. Um, am I in no. now? Yes. Okay, I'm Mr. sorry Purdy. for that. My name is, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. My name is John Purdy. I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, the bill before you authorizes, authorizes $738 million dollars to pay for the reconstruction of 47 miles of arterial streets as listed in the city's resolution and, re and request to you. These projects were selected from St. Paul's 165 mile network of arterial streets, but unfortunately this bill leaves 118 miles of arterial streets and their residents out of the deal because the tax revenues cannot be spent on anything but the named projects. Street improvements for them will continue be, to be financed in part by large special assessments. $6,500 per parcel is the current rate. Compared to residents living on Summit or Grand Avenue who pay nothing, this is an unreasonable, closed-ended, and unfair bill that excludes 71% of St. Paul's residents living on arterial streets. Lastly, I ask the Senate Taxes Committee to get a legal opinion regarding the harmony of this bill with Article 12, Section 1, Sentence 3 of our Minnesota Constitution, which reads, the legislature shall pass no local or special law authorizing the laying out, opening, altering, vacating, or maintenance of roads, highways, streets, or alleys, or the granting to any private corporation, association, or individual any special or exclusive privilege immunity, or franchise, whatever. That's the end of the quote, and thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Purdy. Uh, members, any comments or questions? Senator Weber. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
Well, I certainly understand the city's position, and I also understand Mr. Purdy's position here. Uh, I guess my question uh, for uh, the mayor, Madam Chair, would be, uh, are you anticipating a change in policy for the reconstruction of all your arterial streets? Or uh, is this what is going to happen? Some of them will uh, not have an assessment and other residents will. Mr. Um, mayor. Chair S. Chair Nelson, uh, Senator Weber, thank you for the question. We are not anticipating a change in policy. Uh, my understanding is that those uh, streets that are impacted by the sales tax proposal would still be subject to the same type of assessment uh, financing uh, in addition to the uh, public financing that would be in, in the same way as we currently do that. Senator Weber. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, so you're anticipating both an assessment and sales tax monies going in to pay for the street. That's what you're saying? Senator, yes, the combination. Okay. One final question. Senator Weber. Do you anticipate then those assessments uh, being less than what other streets are typically assessed for? Mayor Carter. Madam Chair, Senator Weber, again, we do not anticipate any change in the policy in terms of how we, um, uh, how we finance those streets. Uh, to my knowledge, the disparity described by the gentleman on Zoom uh, is inaccurate. Thank you. Um, Senator Dreskowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mayor, have you contemplated uh, the, uh, the constitutional provision that uh, Mr. Purdy talked about uh, Article 12, Section 1, Sentence 3 of the Minnesota Constitution and its relationship to your proposal. Mr. Mayor. Um, Senator, uh, Madam Chair, Senator, um, I would probably need a refresh on what exactly that bill about. is. I don't, Senator Draskowski, do you have that full clause? Um, I, I, Mr. Purdy read it, but he's, he's got it in his, um, in his written materials here. Uh, it reads, the legislature shall pass no local or special law authorizing the laying out, opening, altering, vacating, or maintaining of roads, highways, streets, or alleys, or granting to any private corporation, association, or individual any special exclusive privilege, immunity, or franchise, whatever, or authorizing public taxation for a private purpose. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Senator, uh, it may be that the, the gentleman on Zoom was referring to the inaccurate disparity that we just uh, addressed. Uh, uh, that may be the case. Um, I'm not sure how what connection um, uh, funding public streets would be to enriching private property. Senator Iskowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I don't know either, but I'm just wondering if you had done an analysis on this as a city with your your resource people. Um, anyway, thank you, Mr. Se Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Klein. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and just to comment on the concern of Mr. Purdy about the constitutional provision and, and Senator Oskowski's question, you know, the language of the bill really does not itemize anything about streets, alleys, uh, or roadways. It, it speaks to the sales tax, which is uh, under the jurisdiction of this committee and this legislature. And so I don't, I don't think there's a constitutional concern here. Uh, thank you, Senator Klein. And uh, certainly that was something that could, could be taking up uh, at a municipal level uh, if, there, if there were. Um, any final comments? Uh, now, Senator Pappas, do you have any final comments? Uh, no, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, the bill will be laid over for possible inclusion. That is Senate File 2366. Um, thank you, Senator thank Pappas. You. Thank you. Senator Jasinski, welcome to the Tax Committee. Senator Jasinski is bringing Senate File 2355. Rice County. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. Again, I have Senate file number 2355. Uh, what's asking here today is for a 38 cents uh, sales tax uh, uh, for a public safety center. And with that, I'll turn over my city or county administrator of Rice County, Sarah Folstead. Uh, thank you, Senator Jasinski. Uh, Ms. Folstead, introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Good morning, Madam Chair. My name is Sarah Folstead, and I'm the county administrator for Rice County. Um, thank you, Senator Zinsky, for submitting this bill for consideration. Um, a little background about our project. We currently have um, two jail locations, a public, um, one combined with our law enforcement center, which is our main jail, and one that is an annex um, that prior to the pandemic held a lot of our um, work release and lower classified inmates. Um, in 2019, the DOC um, came and did an, uh, their annual inspection, and we were told we'd be downgraded to a 90-day um, hold facility. 
Um, at that time, then, the county board considered and approved a study to determine how best to move forward, and we did receive an extension from the state on that downgrade. Um, so between 2019 and now, the board did a series of studies looking at do we expand at um, either our annex or downtown location, do we combine with a neighboring jail and do something more regional, or do we build on a green space? And through that process, they determined that building at a new location was the most cost effective and better thing for the long run. Um, so last session we were here um, looking for approval to go for um, a referendum on the local option sales tax. Um, and between that time and now, we did have to proceed with starting this project. So last summer, the board did um, issue bonds and last fall um, approved um, bids on the project. So it has started. Um, we are running three months ahead of schedule and um, actually on and under budget. So that's a good thing to hear based on kind of how construction is going. Um, this new facility will um, address the deficiencies that the state had identified with our current operations regarding classification, um, the uh, recreation space, um, mental health, um, and other things that we were not able to accommodate at our current location. Um, so again, we're just asking for the opportunity to present to the voters a 3 ace cent sales tax to help cover repayment of those bonds. Thank you, uh, Ms. Falstead. That's great to be under budget and ahead of schedule. Thanks, we thanks. like those two things together. Uh, any further uh, comments, um, members? Uh, Senator Dijinsky, final comments. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and committee members, again, thank you for taking consideration of this and look forward to uh, putting it into the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Senate file 2355 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Now, uh, we have one senator that we skipped earlier. I'm looking for Senator Hoffman. I do not see him. We'll have to come back to that. Um, members, we're on uh, item 11 on your agenda. That would be Senator Morrison, Senate file 1667. I'm not seeing Senator Morrison. We'll come back to that one. And uh, now we have uh, Senator Seeberger. Calling Senator Seeberger. Senator Seeberger, welcome to the committee. You have Senate File 1996, Cottage Grove. Would you like to open with a couple comments? Thank you, Madam Chair, members Seeberg. of the committee. Um, we are here for uh, um, an investment and commitment of 50 cents on a $100 purchase to help Cottage Grove with a couple of projects. The first project requires $13 million to build out the master plan for a park along the Mississippi River. Um, Cottage Grove has more Mississippi uh, shoreline than any city in our state, yet we lack public access to the river. The site was recently purchased with the support of national, state, county, and regional support, giving Cottage Grove nearly a half mile of shoreline and 40 acres of public property within the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area. The second project requests $17 million to expand our uh, recreational opportunities at Hamlet Park, which is the oldest, largest, and most used park. The investment in this park will make it a top choice for hosting athletic tournaments and events, while also providing activities for our, our less economically advantaged neighborhoods well into the future. <clears throat> the third project asks for $6 million for improvements to River Oaks Golf Course and Event Center. This facility is a popular destination for residents and visitors, and Cottage Grove would like to capitalize on the success by expanding recreational and event opportunities for all seasons while diversifying the user base. I have uh, Mayor My uh, Myron Bailey here to testify, as well as the Cottage Grove City Administrator. Thank you, Senator Sieberger. Mayor, welcome to the committee. Introduce yes. yourself for the record and begin, please. Yes, uh, my name is Myron Bailey. I'm the mayor of Cottage Grove. And Madam Chair and members of the committee, thank you. Uh, Mr. Klein. <laughs> uh, just wanted to um, mention that we've been studying uh, doing something like this with the local option sales tax uh, for about two years. And we've done some community engagement opportunities out there. And um, we believe that uh, because of the community engagement and the uh, study that we've done, that it shows that we have some great potential here for these uh, three projects that uh, Senator Seeberger had just uh, mentioned to you, so I, I won't necessarily go over them again. Other than we are hearing from our local citizenry that they are really looking at us to try to create some river access. We've heard this uh, comment uh, within our community uh, since well before I became mayor, uh, which I've been mayor now here in Cottage Grove for 16 years. Uh, 
we have not had an opportunity to get river access. And just within the last two years, we've had an opportunity to work with a uh, landowner down along the river, uh, as was mentioned earlier, for us to get uh, uh, to purchase some property uh, with uh, state, county, and regional supporters, uh, which would be 40 acres in this particular case. That is also going to attach to a state DNR project, which is over 200 acres, uh, which will be adjacent to this park. And that particular one, as it was mentioned earlier, will be about $13 million. The second project, which was mentioned of the three, was $17 million uh, to expand Hamlet Park, which is our oldest park uh, within the city of Cottage Grove. Uh, it is in an area of our community that, as I mentioned, is an older part of our community, so we do get it. It's more of an affordable housing option in this particular area, and uh, we've been slowly working at getting additional uh, opportunities built into this park, but unfortunately, uh, we just haven't gotten there yet. So again, after talking to our citizens in Cottage Grove, uh, we believe uh, putting this proposal out to them uh, in the form of a referendum question on this, the sales tax option uh, will give us the, uh, the answer that the, the citizens are asking for. And then lastly, uh, that was mentioned about River Oaks. River Oaks uh, is along Highway 61, so it is a, of regional significance. Uh, what we're also doing, though, even though it's River Oaks Golf Course and Event Center, we're looking at doing some additional items there that aren't, aren't necessarily centered around golf and give options for those that don't, you know, can't afford paying for golf and things like that. So there's other items that we're looking at doing with our golf course there uh, that would uh, open it up for other uh, citizens of different uh, age groups and such to be able to use uh, different pieces of that facility uh, into the future. And that particular uh, expense there is about six million. And so uh, also, I, I don't know if I want to turn it back to Senator Seeberger, but I do appreciate your time in uh, hearing me today and hope that you'll consider us for this proposal. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And I also see uh, Jennifer Levitt, uh, the administrator. Welcome to the yes. committee. Introduce yourself for the record, please. Begin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Jennifer Levitt, city administrator with the city of Cottage Grove. You may begin. Um, at this time, the city of Cottage Grove, as been stated, we're looking for uh, the referendum of uh, half of 1% for 25 years for $36 million for that referendum question. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Levin. Uh, members, this is a new project, uh, was not part of the 22 conference committee agreement. Senator Hosschild and I uh, met as, as you presented this to us uh, via Zoom. Uh, members, any questions, comments? Uh, Senator Seberger, any final closing comments? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for the, um, allowing us time today to present this um, request. And just for the record, I would like to note that I learned to water ski on the St. Croix River. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Senator Sieber. I, I think we're all water skiers here in Minnesota. Well, it is the birthplace of water skiing, you know. All right. Next up, uh, the bill, uh, Senate File 1996, will be laid out for possible inclusion. Uh, Senator Rasmussen, Senate File 2127, Fergus Falls. Come on up. Good morning, Madam Senator Chair. Rasmussen, welcome to the committee. Uh, proceed with the, your opening comments, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The legislature approved a request by the city of Fergus Falls to seek a local option sales tax at the 2022 general election. In the special session of June of 2021, the legislature approved Fergus Falls' request to go to the voters for two projects. After months of planning and pre-design work, the city determined that the original price for one project, the Aquatic Center, had risen substantially due to inflation. The city came to the legislature, along with several other municipalities, to seek authority to increase the amount of funds for the Aquatic Center by up to $3 million before going to the voters in November. The negotiated tax agreement in 2022 included the request uh, for Fergus Falls and other communities to increase their referendums, but um, as we know, Madam Chair, that agreement never passed. In August 2022, the city approved a resolution to ask the voters for up to $10.8 million, and I believe that they were transparent with our community in their request. Um, the ballot question passed with about 60% of the voters approving the request this last November. 
Um, I'm gonna ask Mr. Carlson and Mayor Shire to speak to the efforts that the city made with the local planning committee, the legislature, and others to get us where we are today. Thank you, uh, Senator. Um, Mayor, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Ben Shire, I'm the mayor of Fergus Falls. I think Senator Rasmussen did a good job of giving you the background of this project. It's, it's one that we've worked on as a community for um, better part of a decade. Uh, to get to the point where we, uh, in, it was approved by the, the committee in 2021. Uh, like Senator Asmussen indicated, like many projects across the state, costs were much higher than uh, as we went through the process. And so we uh, continue to work with the community, with the committee, and with our business community, which I will note supported this project by over 79% of the Chamber of Commerce came out strongly in support of this project. So uh, appreciate the uh, consideration of, of the committee this morning, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I see another testifier. Would you like to speak? Sure. Welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record, please. Uh, Madam Chair and members, Joel Carlson. I've had the pleasure of representing the city of Fergus Falls for a long, long time. And we were faced with a very difficult dilemma in uh, August of 2022. Uh, we knew that the project was not viable at 7.8 million, uh, but with the 3 million that we thought was coming, uh, the project was viable. We didn't want to wait another three years before we could start construction on this project because our uh, authority to go to the voters, uh, as you know, is only valid for two years. And so we would have had to restart the process and come to you this session to start all over again. Uh, and so it, the decision was made after consulting many uh, people in the, in the Capitol here, I won't name them by name, but we did talk to members and staff about, you know, what would happen if we, um, if we went for up to 10.8 million and then came and sought the additional funds we knew that we uh, needed approval before we could seek any or collect any additional revenue. Uh, and that's the decision that we made. We didn't want to have two elections. We didn't want to let the voters think there was a cost overrun and that we had to come uh, back to them for another referendum. So that's the decision that was made. Uh, and now we're here uh, asking you to kind of uh, follow through on what we had hoped would have happened uh, in the spring of 2022. Thank you, Madam Chair, and we will be happy to answer questions. I uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Carlson. Yes, there are many of us at this table in this capital across this land that I uh, wish that 2022 conference committee agreed upon report had been taken up. I uh, respect uh, the responsible actions that you took uh, and know that uh, just to be clear, um, you were not alone in the fact that there was such an overrun in construction expenses or anticipated construction expenses. And um, so while the voters have approved the additional um, amount that was approved in the conference committee report last year. Uh, we still need to do that notwithstanding language, yes. uh, and that is uh, in your bill, notwithstanding the requirement that the voter approval after legislative authorization. So any further comments or questions? Uh, Senator Rassman, Rasmussen, closing comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, present this bill today and look forward for its inclusion in a tax omnibus bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Rasmussen. I believe Senator Morrison is in. Senator Morrison, welcome to the committee. Oh, yes, and uh, Senate file um, 2127 is laid over for possible inclusion. Senator Morrison, Senate file 1667. Members, this is a uh, local sales tax request for Excelsior. Thank you, Madam Senator Chair. Morrison. Uh, and thank Two you comments. for your consideration. I apologize for my tardy arrival. Um, Madam Chair and members, thank you for hearing Senate File 1667, which would allow an extension of Excelsior's current local option sales tax to help complete the needed funding for regional public infrastructure in Excelsior. Excelsior is home to the popular Excelsior Commons Lakefront Recreational Area and a busy historic commercial district that's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Excelsior is proud to welcome thousands of visitors to the commons year round as it provides a natural space for people to gather for recreation, community building, and connecting with Lake nature and Lake Minnetonka. The local option sales tax has helped to restore and rebuild the commons to maintain and improve it to meet the needs of the community and its thousands of visitors. And we're asking for an extension of that tax in order to complete the restoration of the commons. 
And I want to thank you, um, Madam Chair and Senator Housechild, for meeting with uh, the City of Excelsior to discuss the project. Um, and Madam Chair, I do have an Excelsior City Council member and City Administrator here today. Uh, thank you, thank you. Senator Morrison. Um, Council Member Karen, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you. Good morning, I am Council Member Jennifer Carone. Thank you, Chair Nelson, Chair Rest, and members of the committee for taking the time to hear from us today. I would also like to thank Senator Morrison for her continued willingness to listen to Excelsior's needs and concerns and her advocacy on behalf of our very small and very busy city. We are requesting a renewal of our local option sales tax at a half percent, which was approved in the 2019 session. The renewal request of $23 million would complete the work outlined in Excelsior, Excelsior's Commons Park Master Plan. I always have trouble getting that one out which was adopted by the City Council in 2014. We have found that we are accruing the sales tax at a faster rate than we anticipated, which has enabled us to complete the two projects in the Great Lawn area that are illustrated in the fact sheet that is in front of you. We have received positive community support for the investments we've made thus far, and this momentum will result in us spending the full $7 million that was originally authorized for the initial projects in our plan within the next 12 to 18 months well in advance of the 25 years authorized. We thank you all for the strong support of our regional commons park and respectfully um, request your continued support so that we can complete the full master plan within the original 25 year time frame. And we do plan to hold another referendum. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Karin. And uh, you have another testifier. Um, introduce yourself for the record and you may begin. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. My name is Christy Luger. I'm the city manager for the city of Excelsior. We appreciate the time this morning for considering our request to extend the local option sales tax. The Commons is a 13-acre park. We've done the kitchen. We love to do the living room and some of the bedrooms as well as part of our big remodels. So thank you for your support. I thank you, Administrator Luger. Any further comments or questions from the committee? Uh, Senator Morrison, final comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate your and the committee's consideration for inclusion into the tax omnibus. Thank you. Uh, the bill, Senate file 1667 is laid over for possible inclusion. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Senator Frentz, Senate file 2349. This is North Mankato. Welcome to the committee, Senator Friends. Um, do you have some opening comments? I do, and uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair and members. Very glad to return to the Tax Committee on behalf of my hometown of North Mankato, joined by North Mankato Mayor Scott Carlson, and I'm asking you to consider Senate File 2349. I know you've reviewed a number of proposals today. This one is a little different, Madam Chair. The voters of North Mankato in 2016 went to the polls to review a half percent sales tax increase for various uses among them, indoor recreational facilities. Glad to report with overwhelming support, 73% of the voters, that was passed as an extension of $15 million. However, the tax committee here in the Senate the following year limited those, those uses to $9 million. And the reason that we're here basically is to allow us uh, to recapture the additional $6 million and to put that fund to good use for an indoor recreational facility in North Mankato. I like to boast about Caswell Park. It's the only part of my neighborhood where there's ever a traffic jam, and that is because the girls' state high school championships are held there every year, and it's a huge success. The funds here are proposed to be used for an indoor recreational facility that would allow for basketball, volleyball, pickleball, and a bit, be about 115,000 square feet. Again, overwhelming support of the citizens, and um, for whatever reason in 2017, the amount of money was limited. I will allow Mayor Carlson to offer you some testimony more to the heart of the matter, and then happy to take questions, Madam Chair. Um, there are some details in the bill itself, which if the committee uh, wants me to go through, I'd be happy to. With that, uh, proud to introduce my friend, teacher of some of my children, and now North Mankato Mayor Scott Carlson. Mayor, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Yes, thank you, Senator Friends. My name is Mayor Scott Carlson. Um, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members for having me today. Um, I'll skip over a few things that Senator Frentz already uh, mentioned. Um, I will say that uh, 
you know, we originally were awarded $2 million uh, for $2 million for Casual Regional Sports and Soccer Complex updates and improvements. And most importantly for this hearing, um, initial design work for the indoor rec facility project in 2021. Um, in the project will continue to, uh, uh, to the regional, con uh, contribute, sorry, to the regional quality of life and economic well-being in North Mankato and the surrounding area. Um, all local colleges and universities and numerous adult and youth clubs have committed to use of this regional facility when built. Our impact spans across South Central Minnesota, north to St. Cloud, east to Rochester, south to Ames, Iowa, and west to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our economic draw for this facility is Southern Minnesota, Northern Iowa, within about 65 plus mile radius of North Mankato. This facility will provide a home for indoor sports that does not exist today and provide a venue open to all citizens of, <clears throat> sorry, of all citizens of our community and the surrounding area. The construction of a field house also responds to regional planning efforts. Caswell Softball has long been recognized, as Mr. Frentz uh, said, as uh, the home of the state Minnesota State Softball Tournament and many international and uh, national softball tournaments also. Uh, this new indoor facility will ensure Caswell's ability to serve as a year-round facility, doubling its local economic impact in five years. As important um, as this facility will also provide more opportunities for children and adults in the area uh, with community programming, more leagues and clinics for multiple sports and activities offered for families of all income groups. Um, I had forgotten to say this to other committees, but uh, I am a 51-year uh, uh, full-time, my whole life has been in North Bay and Cato. I am uh, currently an elementary fire teacher in North Bay and Cato at an elementary school. I have been coaching sports for 31 years for many different sports, uh, clubs, uh, team sports, and individual sports. And I can tell you through my connections in South Central Minnesota and around the region that um, there is a lot of excitement for additional space like this in our region. Um, from many of my colleagues, um, local teachers, um, and people that live in North Mankato, Mankato, and the surrounding area. So um, I am connected with people. I do get to ask people about these things and see what their um, thoughts are on it. And I have gotten a lot of positive comments about this project. Thank you, Mayor. Senator Friends and Mayor, the Mayor, are you planning to hold a referendum on this um, increase? Or maybe I should turn that over to your senator. Yeah, let's Senator, senator Friends. Friends. No, Senator Friends. No, thank you for the question, Madam Chair. What we're proposing is to amend subdivision three and subdivision four. And to just be clear, sorry, it's probably my kids telling me what a great phi ed teacher Mr. Carlson was back in the day. Um, what we're proposing is to amend section two and section three to conform to the will of the voters as it was already expressed in November 2016, which was at the higher amount. And so we do not propose another referendum, but simply to recognize the will of the voters at that time. Um, and by that, Madam Chair, you can see in su subdivision four simply increased the amount total collected from 15 to 21, and then in subdivision two from the 9 million that the tax committee in the Senate uh, approved in 2017 to the 15 million that the voters approved. Thank you, Senator Friends. Um, I will tell you that that's something that I think the committee is gonna have to wrestle with. Uh, you have very different voters now than you did in 2016. And um, you have a very different tax committee. Um, the, the, um, so I think that is a, is a concern. And my advi only advice at this point would be to consider uh, the need for a referendum. That is, is a, a bit of a stretch uh, to, to say that. And, and we can't speak to why 2017, the full amount was not um, authorized, um, it's, you know, uh, many of us, uh, we, we can't speak to that, we don't know why. Those were uh, different uh, people here at that time, just like you have different voters in North Mankato now. Uh, members, any further comments or questions? All right, Senator Friends, closing comments. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thanks for the work of the tax committee. It's, it's, uh, it's the kind of thing I would expect you to ask about. Just to be clear, those voters approved the collection of these taxes until the year 2038, so I understand your point about different voters. Um, I think Mayor Carlson wants to speak to us uh, a little bit more, but here's what he would wanna say. We've already talked to everybody in North Mankato and they're supportive, so I'll spare you that. 
Um, I do appreciate the opportunity to address the tax committee and for your wrestling, I look forward to helping in any way I can providing further context, including uh, suggestions about further voter outreach. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to present it. I guess that's my roundabout way of saying I'm not sure the mayor needs to address the committee anymore, but would indulge the chair if you wanted to hear from uh, him. Thank you, uh, Senator Friends. Senator Mayor, uh, Mr. Mayor, did you have any further comments? Um, one Mr. additional Mayor. comment. Um, it, it, obviously, the, the data, you, can, you cannot uh, get the data this way, but when elected, it's my first time um, running for elected office in, in North Mankato or in the area. And uh, I did win all precincts in North Mankato. Um, and one of the contentious issues at all the forums is was the indirect facility sales tax uh, issues. And so I believe by uh, winning all precincts and doing as well as I did that indirectly it sort of correlates to the, that the citizens still are very supportive of this topic or this uh, project. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations on winning every precinct. I think that's a wonderful uh, thing to note. Um, however, there is a precedent issue, and I'm sure that's something that this committee will be wrestling with. Um, seeing no further comments, uh, Senate File 2349 is laid over for possible inclusion. Okay. And uh, Senator Hoffman, we are glad you are in the tax committee today. Senate File 1619. And that is uh, Rogers. Senator Hoffman, welcome to the Tax Committee. Um, would you like to open with a couple comments? I would, Madam Chair and members. Thank you. First of all, thank you. Last night, it was a late night last night. It put, I, I, who knows, putting together a spreadsheet on behalf of people that most needed in Minnesota would be such a long, arduous. You, you've been there. And Senator Rest, Senator Dibble. Senator Weber, I, I just want to say thank you. You know, when the COVID-19 pandemic commenced, the city of Rogers paused all capital planning to gauge their risk and ability to move forward with projects. Due to inflation and supply chain issues, many previously approved projects were deemed too expensive. And, and however, with the increase in sales tax receipts, there was good news. There was an ability to bridge the funding gap with a higher revenues over the same period of time. So as opposed to establishing a new tax in the city of Rogers, the bill that we have in front of you modifies, it just modifies the existing sales tax authorization language to expire the later of one, 20 years or two, when 25 million plus an amount sufficient to pay interest on the cost of issuing the bonds has been received. What this bill does is it allows the city of Rogers to get the full 20 years of revenues sufficient to complete the projects for the residents. You have a handout in front of you. Um, uh, describe these projects in more detail. You can see those. There's a trail and pedestrian crossing facilities. There's an aqua aquatics one as well as the athletic facilities, which is an indoor turf and park facility. And so members, I just have with me Doran Cote, who's the public works director for the city of Rogers. And we also have here Kevin Gooley, who's a city council member. And of course, Mayor Rick, um, um, Ely, uh, if you think of the word Ely, Minnesota, when you look how he spells his name, you just got to remember Ely. So we have that uh, with you, Madam uh, Chair and Member. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Hoffman. We'll go to your uh, testifiers first. Um, on the agenda, we have Public Works Director Cody. Welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record, please. Thank you, Begin. Madam Chair, members um, of the committee. Um, my name is Doran Cody. If you need the spelling, it's D-O-R-A-N, last name C-O-T-E for the record. I am the city engineer and public works director for the city of Rogers. Um, and again, we have Mayor Ely here, Council Member Julie, to show the city support for this proposed change in legislation. We do want to thank Senator Hoffman for being the author, and special thanks to Senators Nelson and Hoshild and their staff for taking time to vet this bill last month. We want you to know that our city council fully supports the proposed extension and takes seriously their obligation to deliver projects promised through the original sales tax referendum in 2018. Rogers has not been immune to the incredible increase in costs that you've been hearing about from a number of presenters today. And if it were not for that incredible increase in costs, we would not be here today. I can use one example. There is a pedestrian crossing that's on your list of projects. I've been working on that project for 18 months. In the 18 months I've been working on it, it has doubled in price twice. So it's gone from a $750,000 project to a $3 million project. 
This bill is a simple duration extension of our previously approved quarter cent sales tax and allows us to raise $25 million, which is the amount we're anticipating would be needed to deliver all of the projects that are on your list. Thank you, Madam Chair, and to the committee for your time today, and I'm happy to stand for any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Cote. Uh, Mayor or Councilman, do you have comments? Do either of you want to speak? Uh, yes. Mayor, uh, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you. My name is Rick Ely, Mayor of Rogers. I want to thank Madam Chair and the committee for listening today. I'll be brief. Um, this is an important extension of our uh, uh, possibility of us to raise more funds to build these facilities in our community. Uh, I always tell people that I'm in the, we are in the food, in the, uh, public service business and uh, you know those taxpayers need um, uh, things to help them move along too with parks and trails and stuff. So we appreciate it. We all face the same issue that most people in this room have today with the uh, extension of, and the increasing pricing for us to do, get projects done. So um, I thank you for your consideration and appreciate it greatly and uh, hope we can get this uh, situated. So thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councilman, did you have any comments? Support. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, members, any comments or questions? I have a couple questions. Um, it's not clear to me, um, you know, a referendum is required, and I want to, I would like you to address that uh, in your, in the legislation. I, I do not um, see that, but there is a requirement for a referendum, and I'd like to uh, have either the Senate author uh, or one of his testifiers speak to that. And that is because you're seeking an additional amount of money. So it's an additional um, amount of money, uh, about I think uh, 5.5 million for projects authorized in 2019. So that's one thing to um, increase the amount of money I would require that voter referendum. And I'm not, I wasn't clear in your testimony if you're planning on that. Uh, Madam Chair and members, now what we were seeking was the, the extension side of it. As you know, Rogers, like a lot of uh, cities, especially when you look at their property poor district, right? And so um, our hope was not to have the referendum side of it. Pierre will eight, or uh, if the mayor uh, wants to, to uh, make a comment on that. But that was not something that we had planned about, Madam Chair, just because of the fact that this is an extension. We saw this as an extension, not necessarily a new thing to do. Uh, thank you, Senator Hoffman. It, it is an extension, but extensions do require referendums. Uh, Senator or Mayor, did you have any further comments on that? Or uh, Peter, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record, please. Madam Chair, uh, members, we were not planning to seek another referendum. I believe we had this discussion when we did the pre-vetting sure. of it, and I think the one thing that we raised is is that. You know, the voters voted on a certain amount of projects for the referendum. Now, they also voted on a certain amount of money. So I think the argument could be made that the voters have already said yes to the project and the duration of the, of the uh, sales tax. But again, now we're extending that and extending the amount as well. But in our eyes, and at least in the wishes of the City of Rogers, they do not want to do another uh, hmm. referendum. Do you, uh, this might be a question for the councilman or the mayor, uh, are you concerned that the voters would not approve? Uh, is, it, is there a reason why you would not choose to go to the voters to uh, increase the amount of this local sales tax? Yeah, well, I don't see that as an issue, but I, I look at the fact that we're not, we're not asking for a whole new project. We're just asking for a four-year extension on what we've already had, what they've already voted on. Uh, do I do I think the citizens would be concerned? Um, I I don't think so. <laughs> you know, they the projects we all we are trying to get done are all um, citizen related. You know, uh, a, a workout facility, things like that, a pool. Those are things that we did a, a, a we asked people what they wanted in the city, what projects they would like, and those are the projects that we earmarked for. Our, t our sales tax increase, so. Yes. Well, thank you, Mayor. So, uh, no, I, I think the projects uh, probably speak for themselves. And um, I just note, I think this is something the committee will have to wrestle with because uh, there's a couple things that need to be in that resolution that was passed the first time and now an extension. You know, the projects have to be listed as does the amount and the time. 
And so I, it sounds like you're asking for an exception, which of course does set a precedent, and Senator Hoffman knows about precedent setting here. So uh, that's something that I think we're just gonna have to wrestle with. I wanted to make sure I un that the committee understands um, what your goals are and, and, and your reasoning. There's one other question um, that also was um, a bit out of the norm, and um, I'm not sure whom would want to speak to this, but it looks like um, you are uh, asking that the tax, uh, the local sales tax option, um, continue 20 years or, or uh, until a sufficient amount is raised. And the question there is the word ladder. So the challenge there is it appears, and this might not be the intent, but you'll need to um, address this, that you are seeking to impose the tax even after the amount has been raised to pay for the projects. And so I just, I wouldn't think that would be your intention, but it, that's how it appears to read, requiring the tax to terminate at the latter of 20 years or when sufficient amount is raised. And so I'm wondering, Senator Hoffman, if you want to amend, if that's not the intention, if you want to amend your bill to strike the word ladder. Madam Chair, Senator members, Hoffman. thank you, Madam Chair. Members, there was a, if you look at the Minnesota Department of Revenue did an actual analysis of the file that was done in the other body, I'm not gonna say what it was, but the, the authorized bond issue, it, it says the bill increased the project cost limit. They, they use the word limit, so I think that eliminates that phrase on ladder. I don't understand, you know, maybe it should go to judiciary and we can have a, a debate on ladder versus not ladder. I'm kidding, that was, I was just, <laughs> nobody wants to go to, but I, it's kind of fun watching those lawyers have a debate on a single word, Madam Chair. Sen I, Senator I, I, Hoffman, <laughs> it is always um, interesting to be in front of that Judiciary Committee, a panel of lawyers discussing <laughs> the word the ladder. I, I think, um, Madam Chair, I think to that point with the Department of Revenue, by them putting a, a, a clear explanation, I don't even know if the word ladder is even, I'm not a lawyer, I played one once in a play, but um, if that seems to be the hang up, maybe counsel here can give their uh, determination or opinion on that, Madam Chair, um, just a thought. Yes, we'll turn it over to Ms. Pollack. Uh, Madam Chair, members, um, I, I think the concern is that when um, the, the tax would expire at the later of 20 years or when the city determines that 25 million has been raised, we could get into a situation where um, 25 million is raised um, before that 20 years is up. So um, in theory, the tax could be in, in, continue to be imposed um, when the project is paid off, um, and that would be kind of... Um, um, an aberration of the general law, which requires that the, the tax terminate uh, when the project is paid off. Um, additionally, you know, the, the general law requires that the local tax be dedicated to um, specific projects that are, that are authorized in the special legislation um, and, and not for any other purpose. And so the, the concern that the tax could continue uh, past the time that the, um, the projects are paid off, um, I think is what uh, Senator Nelson was uh, alluding to. Thank you, Ms. Pollack. May. Senator Hoffman. Madam Chair, then also I noticed the MMB or, or the Department of Revenue also had a, a permissive language in there that it may it may expire earlier if the if the city so determines. So, how would you, in your opinion, um, make it feasible? Because I think the thing here is we want to. Um, yes. allow the city to just extend what the voters already said they wanted to do and to be able to just say, yeah, it's there. And, you know, if there's a, a sunset, well, I, like you, you've said in the past, like an education used to call sunset rules. So help me out. Th thank you, uh, Senator Hoffman. Well, um, the tax may expire early if the city is so determined by ordinance. That's just standard boilerplate language. So that's on every uh, everyone. So that doesn't really answer the question about uh, the city, in fact, it might even bring more questions saying that the city could continue to collect those taxes even though the projects that had been approved were paid for uh, and then it would be up to the city to pass. So I don't think that answers the question. Um, I don't know uh, that you might, I just think this is something for you to consider, Senator Hoffman. These are two things that I believe this committee is going to wrestle with uh, that are gonna make it difficult. One is continuing the tax, the ability to continue the tax um, after the projects have been paid for. And then the other issue is um, not having a referendum. Those are like, you know, bread and butter requirements. 
And so, you know, I know this is really important to you and your uh, city, and I don't want to speak uh, for uh, Chair Rest, the rest of the committee, but I just want you to know that those are two items that I think are going to cause great consternation. So maybe you don't have to uh, address it today, but I do think, um, and I should ask Senator Rest. Uh, Senator Rest, shall we, do you have any comments on this provision? Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, so we'll, um, I think the comments, I think we've made two, two things uh, brought to your attention, and we have time before uh, this rolls out. So I think it's important to, to address you. those issues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. And if you wave, final, final thoughts is- uh, Senator Hoffman. Uh, lines 2.9 really starts, there's the word limited to. So there's uh, something there. Again, I'm, I'm not being a lawyer, but I, I look forward to the conversations. Let's clean this up so that we can allow the city of Rogers to do what the citizens asked the city to do a few years ago, and let's get some flexibility here, and I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you, Senator Hoffman. Uh, the bill, um, Senate File 1619, is laid over for possible inclusion. Madam thank Chair you, and members, Hoffman. thank you. Have a great thank you. Yeah. Tuesday. Thank yes, you. thank you. Um, members, uh, the next item on our agenda is Senator Mitchell. Uh, Senate File 2511, this is the Woodbury uh, sales and use tax authorization. I see you have a testifier, um, our assistant city administrator, Ms. Goral, if she can join with you. Welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record. Uh, Senator, no, give me a few comments about your bill, and then we'll turn it over to your testifier. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a hearing on Senate File 2511. This would allow the voters in Woodbury to approve a public ta a local sales tax for a public safety facility. We're now the eighth largest city in the state um, and the biggest in the East Metro. We, since the last public safety campus um, was updated in 2010, we've grown by 20,000 people with another 20,000 additionally expected by 2040. So we're trying to keep up with the public safety um, needs. Uh, we also do some um, targeted response with the surrounding communities um, as needed and to include St. Paul. Um, just hearing the concerns from the last testifier, uh, it's very clear that this would be have to be approved in a general election um, the, and that the project would be the lesser of two, um, either the time period or when the project was paid for. So it expires, whichever happens first. Um, and with that, I would like to turn it over to my testifier. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Mitchell. Administrator Goral, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing the city of Woodbury to come before you today. I am Angela Goral. I'm the assistant city administrator for the city of Woodbury. I'd like to begin by thanking Senator Mitchell for her support and leadership in assisting the city of Woodbury with the bill to allow, allow a local sales tax for our public safety campus project. Uh, as, as noted, Woodbury is now the eighth largest city in the state with a population of over 80,000 and is the largest city on the East Metro outside of St. Paul. And as the East Gateway to the state of Minnesota, our businesses and retail centers are very busy, uh, particularly with uh, residents commuting back and forth uh, from Wisconsin. As such, our public safety operations are crucial to supporting our large regional employment and shopping areas, as well as honoring our active mutual aid provisions in the East Metro. Our current City of Woodbury Public Safety Building was first built in 1975 and was updated in 1990, 2000, and most recently in 2010. Since the last update, approximately 20,000 people have been added to Woodbury's population with another 20,000 residents expected by 2040. Uh, the increase in population comes with the need for additional staffing, as well as additional vehicle and equipment storage for our public safety. One of the more expensive parts of our project will be acquiring the adjacent Washington County Service Center, uh, which is in the process of being located to the Metro Gold Line area. In conclusion, the public safety campus project will result in benefits to both the residents and businesses of the city of Woodbury and to non-resident visitors and businesses. Funding the project with a local sales tax will more closely distribute the cost of the project to the users of the facilities. Therefore, on behalf of the city of Woodbury, I humbly ask you to consider allowing our city council the option to opt for a voter referendum for a local option sales tax. We are aware that this type of request has been granted for other public entities and for similar facilities. This tax policy ensures that our local government has a real choice in financing our public safety campus improvements and does not pay for the overburden of providing regional public safety services. Again, I thank you for your time and consideration of the request. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, members, any comments or questions? Very straightforward. You've addressed all the issues. Uh, Senator, any final comments? Um, no, Madam Chair, I thank you for your consideration of this. Uh, thank you, Senator Mitchell. Senate file 2511 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Thank you. Uh, members, next on our agenda is Senator Green. Senate file 2717, Beltrami County. A county sales tax. All right. So I think that's the second one of those we've had today. Senator Green, welcome to the tax committee. Uh, you. Give us a few comments about your bill, please. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. Um, Senate file 2717 would allow the Beltrami County to place a local sales tax proposal before the voters that would provide 5 eighths local sales and use tax for a maximum of 30 years to fund the construction of a new county jail. And I'd like to introduce my uh, testifiers today. I have Beltrami County Administrator Tom Berry and Beltrami County Sheriff Jason Riggs. Um, Administrator Berry, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Senate Tax Committee. <clears throat> My name is Tom Berry. I'm the County Administrator for Beltrami County. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to testify you this, uh, in front of you this morning for Senate File 2717, a bill that could facilitate a new revenue source for the construction of the new Beltrami County Jail. We're also very, very appreciative of Senator Green's support in authoring this, uh, this uh, bill for, uh, for the county. The current jail was originally built in 1989 and has undergone numerous upgrades and expansions over the years. Currently the design, the size, and also the age of the facility is inadequate and it poses many challenges in the safe and efficient operation of the facility. Increases in population and Minnesota Department of Corrections regulatory changes have also contributed to the need for a new facility. While our county continues to explore broader financing options with the state legislature, we respectfully ask for your support of Senate File 2717, which would allow our county to place a question on the November ballot asking our residents whether they would like to finance our new county jail uh, by instituting a 5 8 percent sales tax over the next 30 years. Early indications is gathered in a community survey that the county conducted between August and October of last year show that 65% of citizens are likely or very likely to support a local sales tax to fund the new jail with another 14% of citizens who were neutral. They understand that a sales tax makes the most sense and is the best funding source for financing what will be the largest, most complex and expensive capital infrastructure project in the county's history. And there are a few good reasons for this. About 40% of those incarcerated in our county jail are non-residents of our county. Ironically, about 50% of all revenues collected from this potential new sales tax to finance the new jail would come from non-residents. It seems fitting that non-residents share in the cost for the new facility. Additionally, our county board is sensitive to our county demographics. We remain the second poorest county in the state with a poverty rate that hovers around 20%. Sales tax statutes exempt staple or core purchases like food and clothing, which make up a higher percentage of low to moderate income purchases. If a sales tax, however, were not permitted as the funding source to finance the new jail, then our county board would likely have no choice but to look to property taxes, which would place the full financial burden on local area residents and require us to raise our property tax levy by about 21% and keep it that way for 30 years. Mr. Berry, I'm afraid you've, you're very near or you're over your time limit. Can you, can you give us your concluding comments, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank I will you. do that. Um, we just wanted to uh, present those statistics for you because we are uh, concerned about uh, other funding potential sources for this facility and want to make sure that we get the opportunity to ask our citizens what they would like in regards to how to finance this needed infrastructure. I'll pause there and take any questions. Our sheriff here is, is here as well. For Thank questions. you, Administrator Barry. You. Uh, sheriff Riggs, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself and begin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Jason Riggs. I'm the newly elected sheriff of Beltrami County. Uh, Administrator Tom Barry did an excellent job of explaining our circumstances right now. Um, I'm simply just going to add that this is a very important project for our community. It's a very important project in the sense of for the care 
and safety of our inmate clients and our staff. Uh, thank you for your time, and I would answer any questions as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? I think all the sales tax uh, requirements have been met. Uh, and um, Senator Green, any final comments? Briefly, Madam Chair, I will just say that uh, um, I wish there was more time to present because uh, uh, Beltrami County has actually done an excellent job on some rehabilitation. Uh, things that they've been doing in the jail had great success uh, uh, with the reg regulations coming at them on this jail. They really, their back's against the wall on this. And so the incarceration rate is high and I hope that you'll consider this. Uh, thank you, Senator Green. Senate file 2717 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Uh, Senator Green, you have another uh, bill. You can stay right there. Call up your testifier. Um, Senate file 2785, this is Black Duck. Uh, Senator Green. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think there might be a little mm -hmm. problem with my testifier. If she's online, I'll be more than happy to turn. Is she? Sure, she's on. Okay, great. She had another meeting, but we went long here, so hopefully she's out. So if uh, she's not here, I'll, I'll muddle through the bill, but uh, if she's here, I'll turn it over to her. Uh, Senator Green, uh, staff tells me that uh, Ms. Regas is not online at this moment, so we're going to depend on you, okay. uh, Senator Green, to give us uh, a, a briefing about the Green Duck proposal. I will do the best I, I mean, can. Black Duck, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, also uh, going to be put before the voters in the city of Black Duck. It's for a local option sales tax of one half of one uh, percent. Uh, it is to make some uh, needed improvements across in about five different projects in the city. Uh, including the electrical and utility improvements to the campground, also some uh, playground and ADA compliant uh, issues with the uh, um, park structures, uh, and some uh, uh, trail improvements, uh, and some irrigation of the golf course, and also for the community library. Uh, it's in the bill. I can go through some of them if you want, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Yes, um, and Senator is, Green, uh, just to note, uh, this was in the conference committee last year, so it has been okay. well vetted, and it was included in the conference committee. Okay, well, that's so. great, so then maybe you don't need to hear any more from me. Well, I whatever you, you want to say, bill. continue on. <laughs> Good bill, that's how they ended up here. Uh, Senator Green, though, any, seriously, any uh, final comments or anything you'd like to No, I'm just, I, I just thank you for uh, hearing my bills today. I appreciate that very much. If you have any questions uh, uh, beyond today, I'd be happy to answer those as well. Thank you, Senator Green. Senate file 2785 is laid over for possible inclusion. Um, Senator Hoschild, you have Senate file 27110, and this is for Proctor. Senator Hoschild, to your bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, today I have Senate file 2710 for the city of Proctor to authorize and impose a local sales and use tax. This is regarding um, what I think is a really interesting project and something that I've been personally involved in. Um, it's actually a, a three community initiative, um, Hermantown, Proctor, and Duluth looking to provide uh, trail access to the Munger State Trail um, by allowing Proctor to uh, move forward with this project, they would extend about 16 miles of trail that would connect to some existing and ongoing projects happening in Hermantown from the Hermantown High School and go into Duluth and connect to the Munger Strait State Trail. What's special about that is not just that we're getting the 16 additional miles of trail within Proctor, but that we're actually expanding to about 100 miles of paved trail for these three communities. Um, and so I think what this really shows is a collaborative approach to providing a substantial increase in trail access for many different communities and the entire region. And uh, I do have two testifiers, the city administrator in Proctor, Jess Rich, and a city councilor in Proctor, Jake Benson. Thank you, and I believe they are on Zoom. And um, who do we have up here first on Zoom? Welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself for the record and begin. Hi, I'm Jake Benson, a Proctor City Councilor and a Proctor Business Owner. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee for the opportunity. And um, I wish I could be with you today in person. The Willard Munger State Trail Spur has been part of our master plan for 16 years. We appeared before this committee in 2022 and were approved, but it ended there. 
With voter approval, we can complete the missing link to the 70 mile trail between Duluth and Hankley. It will also connect to Spirit Mountain, Duluth Lake Walk, and it's very near the 300 mile Superior hiking trail. Proctor's bordered on three sides by two cities that already have a 1.5% sales tax. One of those cities, Hermantown, in November passed a sales tax to fund trails that would link to Proctor and ultimately the Munger Trail. That passed by 69% in Hermantown, and we believe those same results would occur in Proctor. Proctor's 150 miles north of St. Paul on I-35, were the I-35 entrance to Spirit Mountain. Proctor was created to serve the iron mining industry, and it was the largest inland iron ore sorting yards in the world. Those railroad tracks connect to the range like an umbilical cord. Yep, we don't get any IRRB funding, and the railroad is one of our largest property own owners, owning about 15% of the city, and it splits our community in half. Proctor is slightly larger than three square miles, but it gets much smaller when you take into account all the land that government owns. Some of Proctor's highest value land pays no property taxes because 42% of all property is owned by six non-paying governments. We would not be here if it was not for the support of our citizens and business community. They know our unique situation. In 2000, our half percent sales tax passed with 77% voter approval. And in 2017, another sales tax proposal was approved in the high 60% range. I thank you for your consideration on 2710. And with me is City Administrator Jess Rich. I uh, thank you, Council Member. Um, Administrator Rich, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Jessica Rich and I am Proctor City Administrator. Um, as uh, City Councilor Benson noted, that we are working jointly with uh, Hermantown and they did pass their sales tax. And on an administrative level, we've already started to, um, we did a trail plan in 2015. This was identified as a need for the region. And we have already started working um, administratively with Hermantown as they build their connect trail connection closer to Proctor. And with the hopes of the passing of this bill we, and uh, voter approval, we can begin our segment of the trail, which comes from I-35 up to Hermantown. Just a little bit of a history on the cost of this. In 2015, when we studied this project, it was a total of 15 million, just under, uh, excuse me, under 12 million. And now with the same reasons that everybody else is testifying today, this project is over 17 million. Um, and uh, we are very hopeful that our voters will approve this upon your approval so that uh, we don't experience any more inflation in this project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Administrator uh, Rich. Members, any comments or questions? Very straightforward. Uh, Senator Hoschild, final comments. I think I've said my piece, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Senator Hoschild. Senate file 2710 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Senator Putnam. We've got two bills up here today. Uh, first one is Senate File 1159. Uh, members, this is for Stearns County. I think we have three county uh, proposals today. Senator Putnam. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, Senate File 1159 uh, allows a ballot measure for Stearns County to impose a sales tax uh, of three-eighths of one percent to fund the building of a new Stearns County Justice Center, consisting of a law enforcement center, judicial center, and jail. Obviously, this is very similar to the last two bills that we heard about county sales taxes, but this one's much more important. Um, okay, Senator uh, Putnam. That, that being said, partially, well, I actually did tour the, the, the jail just a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and not only is it small and impractical, it's also held together with tape. Uh, so uh, for further uh elucidation of our, our situation, I turn to our testifiers, former state senator and our pal, uh, County Commissioner Terrell Clark. Senator Commissioner Clark, welcome <laughs> to the committee. Thank you. Introduce Madam. yourself and yes, continue. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. I'm Terrell Clark. I'm currently serving as the Vice Chair of the Surge County Board of Commissioners. I'd like to thank you all for the work you're doing on this. It's great to be back here and to have an opportunity to talk a little bit about our proposal. I want to reinforce that it's really strong tape 
<laughs> strong safe tape. But yes, um, I think Senator Putnam's description probably uh, suits it well. Um, our request is to have uh, the approval to be able to ask our voters uh, to use up to 3.75 cents of a sales tax, as, as Commissioner, or sorry, Senator Putnam just said, jail, justice center, law enforcement center. Roughly half of our uh, people who are in our justice system are from outside our county. We are truly a regional center, and it reflects it here. With that, our board is very concerned about trying to pay for the debt service off of property taxes. It would add about 20% to our levy, which is significant. So while we, the other thing you should know is while we do uh, use uh, a quarter cent sales tax on transportation, uh, we do not go to the full half which means if we are, if our voters say yes, we will not be an outlier with this investment in the region. Um, like some of the others you have heard, we have done a lot over the years to try to improve, enhance, make this last longer. We truly can't, it would be a waste of money, according to our consultant and our executive committee, if we were to try to just renovate it. And we do not have the space that we need now, let alone for the future. We know we also are needing an additional courtroom and we'll need additional ones in the future. Want to reinforce that we have worked really hard with our community partners, including Center Care, law enforcement, our mental health center and others, to try to uh, make sure that we really only have people who we're afraid of in our jail, not those who it's inappropriate really for them to be in the jail. But even with that, we have significant needs. So we are asking you, again, if we could to get the authority to ask our voters to help with this important, as Senator Putman said, the most important uh, project probably in our region. And I've got a lot of other information, but know you've been going through a lot, so we'll hold anything off unless you have questions, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, Administrator Williams, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Mike Williams. I'm the County Administrator for Stearns County. I really have very little to add other than I'm qu quite confident that the resolution that our board passed unanimously um, and Senate File 1159 com complies with the state statute that you've been referencing uh, throughout the meeting. Uh, thank you, Administrator Williams. And uh, Senator Putnam, I see you have a nice bipartisanship on this bill. Senator Howe as well. Do you have any final comments? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, uh, for hearing the proposal, and thanks for considering it. Uh, thank you, Senator Putnam. Senate File 1159 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Thanks. Senator Putnam, stay right there. You have Senate File 2907. Members, this is St. Joseph's. Request. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Senate File 2907 Senator is also the most important bill that you'll hear today. Uh, this one has a uh, sales tax uh, for authorization for a sales tax uh, on the referendum for one half of 1% in order to uh, build a public safety and equipment facility, a community center, uh, YMCA, uh, a regional trail connections, and some boardwalk and nature park improvements. St. Joe is growing rapidly, uh, yes. members. Uh, you know, uh, we have a, a restaurant there called Crew that was of uh, national significance. And in fact, the chef was just on Chopped. So people are coming to St. Joe and St. Joe is growing. Uh, we need help to build an infrastructure to facilitate that growth. Uh, Madam Chair, I do have one testifier who should be here online. Uh, thank you. Before we uh, do that, Senator Putnam, I believe you have the A1 amendment. As a oh. member of the tax committee, would you like to offer your A1 amendment? Uh, yes, please, Madam Chair. I apologize for forgetting I moved the A1 amendment. Um, do you want to just give a brief uh, update on that amendment and then we'll have the committee vote on it? Uh, it changes some of the numbers, Madam Chair, and then there are a couple technical changes as well. Thank you, uh, Senator Putnam. Uh, members, all those in favor of the A1 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Your amendment is adopted. So to your bill is amended. Senator Putnam will get your testifier up here. Um, and I don't know that I have that. Uh, who is your testifier, Senator Putnam? Uh, it's a city administrator, Mr. O'Neill. Okay, on Zoom. Mr. O'Neill, there you are. Welcome to the committee. Hi. Introduce yourself for the record and begin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. And thank you, Senator Putnam, for uh, sponsoring this bill. Uh, the city of St. Joseph is asking to propose a one-half sales tax, voters to cover the cost of phase two of the community center, along with regional park improvements. The city has partnered with the YMCA to design and operate and manage a community center um, that will be constructed with the phase one improvements by 2025. 
this project has been in the wings with the city. I've uh, been working on this for many, many years, very important project to the city. The mission of the center is to provide space for all ages and be the go-to place to connect families and individuals for health, wellness, and recreation. Phase two, uh, which is the subject of this uh, referendum and sales tax, would include outdoor gathering space, indoor lap pool, gym space, community rooms. The cost is estimated at $11 million over 17 years. Regional park improvements are also included, um, which would consist of a boardwalk and wonderful nature trail along a 95 uh, acre park adjacent to the Sauk River. This project will result in full utilization of the unique natural setting that the Sauk River provides. Also included in this regional park proposal are improvements to Millstream Park, which includes recreational fields, lighting, amphitheater, sports courts, parking lot expansion, and storm snow improvements. Total cost estimated there at six million. Both of these, all these improvements are very important to the community. St. Joseph is not a tax rich community, but yet provides uh, regional services to the area. So this one half sales tax, this one half cent sales tax is considered essential to the completion of these projects. Thank you very much, and I stand for questions. Uh, thank you, Interim City Administrator O'Neill. Members, any comments or questions? Um, seeing none, uh, Senator Putnam, final comments. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. St. Joe is cool. Come visit us. Uh, thank you, Senator Putnam. Senate file 2907, as amended, will be laid over for possible inclusion. Members, we are on our final bill today. And that, uh, Senator Weber, I don't know if that's because W's at the end of the alphabet or because we saved the best to last, but I can't say that because Rochester's coming in a couple days here. But, uh, Senator Weber, uh, you have a uh, Senate file 2848 uh, to your bill, please. Thank this you, Madam Jackson Chair. This is Jackson members. Someone has to bat clean up, so. <laughs> uh, yes, with the approval of Senate file 2848, the city of Jackson would be allowed to go to its taxpayers and ask for a 1% sales tax uh, to finance uh, $5.75 million for the construction, uh, renovation, and improvements to a new outdoor athletic complex. And um, we have uh, with us uh, testifying remotely today from the city of Jackson, Matt Skerritt. And as you go to him, I, Madam Chair, I would just mention the uh, letters of support are attached concerning uh, from a couple of local business people as well as the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thank you, Senator Weber. Um, Mr. Uh, Skerritt, welcome to the committee. Introduce yourself and begin, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Oh, super. Uh, my name is Matthew Skerritt and I'm the City Administrator of Jackson. And um, as the Senator stated, this bill would authorize the city of Jackson to put before the voters a proposal for a one cent local option sales tax uh, to be used to develop an outdoor athletic uh, recreation complex uh, here in Jackson. Uh, Jackson has not had a uh, local option sales tax before. Um, for those of you not aware, Jackson is located in southwest Minnesota on I-90. Uh, about 90 miles east of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, or roughly halfway between Worthington and Fairmont. Uh, given our rural location, the people of Jackson are used to traveling for athletic events. Uh, oftentimes, uh, athletes and families are traveling two hours or more to get to tournaments and athletic events. Uh, specifically, this project would entail a championship baseball field, two softball fields, dugouts, restrooms, uh, concession stands to be located on land east of the uh, Jackson Municipal Liquor Store. Um, it would be highly visible from I-90 and Highway 71 and very accessible to uh, visitors and residents alike. Uh, these uh, uh, fields uh, would be used to, to be host a variety of games and tournaments nearly every weekend. Uh, uh, and some weeknights uh, during the warm weather months. Uh, these events are include, but are not limited to, Northern Star Fast Pitch Softball uh, tournaments, uh, State American Legion Baseball Tournament, a variety of section tournaments, um, collegiate baseball and softball games, amateur baseball and softball games, and a variety of slow pitch and fast pitch uh, softball tournaments. 
Um, each of these events have the uh, capacity to, to, to draw hundreds and even thousands of people, uh, players, families, fans, uh, and others to Jackson who will stay at our hotels, eat at our restaurants, and shop at our businesses. The city also uh, plans other amenities with this uh, uh, complex, including a hockey rink for competitive hockey and skating events that will also draw even more people to Jackson. The project will also tie in beautifully with the proposed uh, multifamily housing development, which is adjacent to the uh, uh, land to the south and a blossoming retail development immediately to the north that already includes a 10,500 square foot family dollar Dollar Tree combo store, a retail multi-tenant building, and a brand new celebration of life center. Um, there is no facility within 80 miles of Jackson that will uh, um, even uh, uh, compete with this uh, facility. You know, there's uh, there is it also ties in beautifully with uh, recreational trails in the area that will be con connected to the beautiful complex. So, um, you know, we believe that the Jack the voters of Jackson deserve the opportunity to vote on this project, and I believe it will be a win-win for Jackson residents and the business community alike. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skerrick. Uh, members, any comments or questions? Well, Senator Weber, final, final comments. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the City Administrator, I think, has done a, a good job <clears throat> of explaining the project. And thank you for the hearing. And I uh, look forward to its inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Weber. Senate file 2848 has been laid over for possible inclusion. Uh, Senator Rust. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you for chairing the, uh, the hearing this morning. Um, um, you do know I want to remind our, our members that um, the bills that come to us from members of the committee um, are always last, um, and mine is usually ultimately last in case we don't get to them. Um, we try, first of all, to hear the bills of... Um, uh, members who have in-person witnesses that have to travel some distance. Um, we also try to accommodate members' schedules who are not members of the committee who have to go to another committee as well. Um, and um, uh, we, we think that is a fair way to um, uh, run our committee and, and appreciate um, <clears throat> that um, other members think that is um, a fair way to operate as well. So I uh, want to thank you and Senator Housechild for overseeing um, the initial presentations on, um, on I think it was a six hour long um, uh, uh, Zoom meeting with the local governments and I think we are seeing that um, uh, to do these kinds of projects that we've uh, heard from the last two hearings, that uh, property taxes are just no longer, um, they're just no longer able to um, uh, lend themselves to, um, to um, capital projects or, or like St. Paul pro uh, um, programs. Um, but the, uh, the need of the cities is, is still there. And of course, we have a whole lot more, more um, uh, bills before us this year be, um, because uh, none were passed previously. Um, we are going to next go to uh, hearing uh, tax increment financing um, proposals and, um, and stay tuned for the rest of the, of the uh, uh, schedule coming forward. Uh, thank you, Senator Rest. And I do want to uh, really commend uh, the staff that made all of this possible. This is an immense amount of information. I want to thank Senator Rest for the suggestion uh, that Senator Hosschild and I spend that long, long Zoom uh, spending the, really the amount of time necessary. It certainly necessary. worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, I think that um, our cities can know that things have been well vetted uh, in a number of areas. So thank you, Senator Hostile, Senator Rest. Committee, thanks for sticking with us. Um, I appreciate the comments and questions today. Um, as Senator Rest said, TIFF tomorrow. Uh, we are adjourned. Have a great day. <laughs>